Oh my God. I love making a video right after a life changing event because that's what I've just been through. And that event is that I've now read both of these two books, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and The Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I did not plan to read these back to back. I did not plan to make a video about both of them. I was in need of like the kind of book that is really emotional and well-written, but also more commercial and fast paced. I knew from a strong recommendation that Evelyn Hugo would be that. I did not know much about it at all. <laughs> which I'll get into. I've managed to go a very long time not knowing that much about these two books. If anything, I know more about Daisy Jones because it has had a bit more hype. It's got the Hello Sunshine, the Amazon show happening, and it's also just easier to describe that it's about the rise of this band. And so many people have said, like, you have to do the audiobook, like, that's the only way to do this book and I did the audio for both of these. So it's been on my 2021 list basically to tackle both of these books. Didn't think I would obsess and read both of them back to back in a matter of like four days, but here we are and that's what I've done. And so now I need to talk about them because what the fuck? Just in case you're unfamiliar, Taylor Jenkins Reid is an author. She's had other books in the past, but these are her two most recent novels, except for Malibu Rising, which is coming out soon. And both of these have just absolutely blown up. Both been optioned for film. They're just fucking delicious books. And I love them both for different reasons. Spoiler, Evelyn Hugo, I preferred. It just goes down as my favorite of the two. It's exactly what I wanted to read. Like these were perfect, like spring into summer books for me. I'll start with Evelyn Hugo and then I'll go into Daisy Jones in case you only want to hear about one of them. I'll make markers so you can scroll ahead. This won't be a heavy spoiler video unless I say so right before something so you'll know. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Holy shit. I start this audiobook. Again, I don't know the plot of this book. I know that it's about Hollywood and an actress and she has seven husbands, whatever. Things I didn't know going in. We would be following this writer named Monique at the beginning who gets the opportunity to interview Evelyn Hugo, who is an aging movie star. Like her career is pretty much behind her. She's an icon, a legend. She must be in her 70s or 80s, I don't remember. When she gets there to interview Evelyn Hugo, Evelyn basically drops this bomb on her that she actually wants Monique to write her biography and publish it and make a lot of money when she dies. Monique has no idea why she's chosen her. Evelyn gives her a reason of like her pieces from before. It's like all of a sudden we're thrust into this interview setting between Monique and Evelyn and the book becomes Evelyn Hugo's rise to fame as someone who grew up in Hell's Kitchen, moved to Hollywood, made it in the 60s, rose to fame as an actress, her entire career over several decades, and seven husbands. <laughs> Hard to believe she gets to seven, but she does it and we hear in detail about all of them. And different ones are, you know, more real than others and happen for different reasons. And it's just fascinating because it's like the story kind of works without there being seven husbands, but it just makes sense for her character and is a good like driving point of the story. But you forget that it's about seven husbands and like you lose track because, well, for me, I was swept away in this other relationship. Mild, mild spoilers, like things I didn't know about Evelyn Hugo coming up now. <laughs> it's not really a spoiler, it's something I should have known. Evelyn Hugo is bisexual. What the fuck? Holy shit. Early-ish in her career, she does Little Women and um, she's co-starring with Celia St. James and long story short, they fall in love and um, that relationship becomes pretty much a driving point of the story. And I didn't know that at all going in, which made it so sweet. The absolute genius of this book and also Daisy Jones is like how much time it covers. And that really gives Taylor Jenkins Reid the opportunity to really just hone in on the moments that are most full of tension, where the most change happens, where the most bliss is. So the only thing we're seeing is like these highly rich and life-changing moments in a character's life, just back to back. Then it'll be like, you know, five years later and we get a paragraph about what's going on. The beauty of it is that there's never not conflict. There's never not 
something around the corner because when things are good we kind of just fast forward and when things are consistently bad we kind of fast forward. I was enamored throughout Evelyn Hugo just about the Hollywood details, managing her career, how she changed her name, how she saw herself as an actress, how she was seen, the politics of Hollywood um, in the 60s, her relationship with Harry, her producer. It's good shit. I almost want to be like why didn't I read this sooner but I'm glad I read it now because <laughs> well I avoided all the spoilers the whole time and god it was so good and exactly what I needed to read. So there wasn't a crazy amount of this in the book but you could tell that Taylor Jenkins Reid had really done her research on acting in Hollywood. The way that Evelyn sees herself as an actress versus Celia, they're two very different kinds of actors where Celia is like classically trained and was scouted by Hollywood and where Evelyn really had to hustle to get a chance basically and would learn as she went. Two very different, very valid types of being an actor, especially during that time. So, but the dynamics between them, how they are perceived and how they work, it causes Evelyn to work harder sometimes. It causes Celia to be complacent sometimes, but then to take for granted her talent. I'm so glad in a book that is as fast paced as this one that we really got moments like that, where the inner life of Evelyn and Celia are both, oh ooh, my gosh. This book tackles so much like everything. Domestic abuse, addiction, queerness, all these things that by the end feel like a distant memory in the book were in it because it's under 400 pages, it is so fast, but it covers a, such a long lifetime that by the end I was just in tears after witnessing this, this life in such detail but in such a compact way. Oh my god. I have to read this book again and again and again and again. There are so many quotes that I need to go back and like tab them or highlight them. There's a quote about the cruelest thing you can do, giving people just enough good so they stick through a hell of a lot of bad. Ooh, that hit me so hard. Another thing that's happening as Monique is sitting there interviewing Evelyn, you forget that that's even happening, Evelyn's boldness and wisdom rubs off on Monique and starts to impact her personal life. This was like my least favorite part of the story because it felt the least fleshed out but I understood it and like it it was pretty necessary to happen. She inspires her to kind of stand up to her boss and negotiate for what she's worth. It inspires her to kind of take charge in her relationship again. In the audiobook I particularly loved the two voices of Monique versus Evelyn and when we would switch into Evelyn's storytelling, we would switch to an Evelyn actor. And like, you forget that this is about Monique interviewing Evelyn, but it gives it a really nice framework because you know that Evelyn, well, she survives, she makes it to this point where she's actually alone later in life and we kind of see where she is. So it's this anchor that she's working towards in a weirdly eerie way because when we look back on the 60s, it's like, it feels like a lifetime ago, but this woman is sitting right here with Monique. So it's like, what, what led you here? And it was some shit. Some shit went down. Her relationship with Celia St. James is just, oh my God. Celia wins an Oscar and Evelyn kisses the TV and chips her tooth. And then Celia wins another Oscar and and her speech says, for anyone tempted to kiss the TV tonight, try not to chip your tooth. <sighs> I've never read such like a commercially appealing book with such stunning writing. This is just the epitome of a great novel. <sighs> Y'all. Mm, 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 mm. One of my favorite books last year was The Vanishing Half. I was having flashbacks to The Vanishing Half while listening to this because that also kind of takes place over a long time and, and hones in on these smaller moments in a much bigger picture. So it's, it's this device that is really interesting and I could see it going wrong, but I've yet to witness it go wrong. So I don't know. It really just made me think a lot about like, my God, this is not about, you know, then I woke up the next day and I got coffee and I thought about what happened. Like, there's none of that. It's all just like shit hit the fan, five years went down, then shit hit the fan again, and then I felt this way, and then there was this conversation about it. 
Oh my god. Taylor Jenkins Reid is a storytelling wizard. And um, I will never forgive her for the experience I just had with Evelyn Hugo because my life is ruined, my life is better, uh, my life is over after reading these two books. So I finished Evelyn on a Friday night and then by Saturday I had decided that like I hadn't had enough and I needed to read Daisy Jones. I thought I was gonna read this like a couple months later. But I was like, I just, I need another hit. I need a Taylor Jenkins read hit in my life. So I start the audiobook for this one and it's like such a pleasure right off the bat because it's all these different voices. It's an oral history. So in case you don't know, it's written this way where all these people have different lines. And so you kind of get to know the voices and who the characters are. It is about the rise of this band, The Six, and also this singer-songwriter named Daisy Jones and how they end up as Daisy Jones and The Six. There's a heaviness to this book, I think because of like the rock and roll scene of the 70s and it really takes on addiction from a really personal standpoint. It's true that there's really no other way to experience this than the audiobook. Like I highly recommend it. The narrator for Daisy sounds like Stevie Nicks, and Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac were a huge inspiration behind this story. I love, love, love that Evelyn Hugo is so heavily about actors and acting and the insights on that. Daisy Jones is all about rock and roll and music. There's some really good research in this because Taylor has done interviews and said pretty explicitly that like, I'm not a musician, she doesn't understand what like the one, four, five chord progression is, but it's there in the book and it really makes sense from them. Again, the way that Daisy is a songwriter versus Billy, the lead singer of the six, Taylor Jenkins Reid really like dives into how artists are different from each other and how, how that impacts every relationship and their own work ethics. And it's, it's not just like they're all songwriters or they're all actors. It's, so complicated. Daisy Jones also takes place over a very long amount of time, less time than Evelyn Hugo. Where Evelyn Hugo is a five-star book for me, Daisy Jones is probably like a 4.5. I loved every second of it, um, but I think just like the ending of Daisy Jones didn't live up for me as much as Evelyn Hugo. And so, I mean, it's not fair to compare them, but I did read them back to back. I did have high expectations. I just, I mean, I have to, my ranking brain has to rate and it has to pick a favorite and it has to have a reason. Another thing she can really explore way more with this having like 10 different perspectives is both sides of every relationship. So like Karen and Graham and all these band members, their relationships with each other, what's happening behind the scenes. There can be so many more subplots than just what's happening with Daisy Jones, what's happening with Billy. It flows like an epic series. Like it's gonna be such a good adaptation, I hope. It's with Hello Sunshine, so like of course it will be. It's got the irremovable Reese's Book Club sticker, so we gotta get this show. I think Taylor Jenkins Reid really dives into her characters on like how they act and work. Like work. What motivates them to do work? And how does their talent and their like level of privilege and what they've already done affect how they do anything moving forward. Daisy Jones ends up being very motivated by people doubting her, people wanting her just to use her voice. She knows she's a good singer, she's never had to work at that, so she doesn't want to put that in the front seat. She has to work hard on writing songs. She wants to be known as a great lyricist. So that's what she has to prove, and that's what she ends up doing. It really reminded me of like Taylor Swift doing Speak Now and writing that entire album by herself after people questioned whether she could write. There was a very much a moment like that where they forced Daisy to record an album of covers and she was like, I'm not being taken seriously as a songwriter. And she really hones her craft because of that, because of that doubt. It's just such an interesting way into a character, their motivation, where their work ethic comes from. It's hard to, to make art about artists and make that interesting and not just like indulgent and masturbatory, but this is so not that. And maybe it's because Taylor Jenkins Reid is not an actor or musician. I don't know if she has an acting background, but she researched this the same way you would research writing a book about marine biologists. There's a real respect and understanding behind like how this story is told. And I so appreciated and just loved that. Loved every second of this. Oh my God. I want to read these two books again and again and again and again. 
How have I been missing out so long, you guys? All the LA of it, of both of them really, the Sunset Strip, they're at the Whiskey A Go Go. It really takes you there. I walked past the whiskey a couple days ago and was like, oh, Daisy Jones was there. In both of these really, just the Hollywood of it, 60s and 70s, like, duh, it was great. So those are my thoughts on The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I adore these books so much. Please let's discuss in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Tiernan. Links to everything are below and um, more soon, hopefully. I want to read more life-changing books. <laughs> Have a good one and...